Up in Minnesota, pro football is more an event than a spectator sport. And if you think the Vikings are tough, you ought to see their fans. When the playoff fever is on them, they come out to the Met and warm up in old-fashioned free-for-alls just for drill. But when they begin to take the wraps off for the big game, Minnesota Viking fans, who are among the hardiest and most loyal in the league, get 100% behind their heroes in purple to root them on over the invaders. This year, the Interlopers with a surprise team in the NFC, the big play exciting St. Louis Cardinals. But the Cardinals opened action, taking a page from the Vikings book on creative defense. As middle linebacker Mark Arneson, number 57, stole his friend talking and try for Jim Lash. This hauled the Vikes' first sustained drive. St. Louis quarterback Jim Hart then went right at the gut of the Vikings D, practicing the old philosophy that the way to beat Minnesota is to run straight at them. But Hart could not resist his big play air game for long. And on this play, he hooked up with Terry Metcalf for 29 yards, well into Minnesota territory. But there, Minnesota choked off the St. Louis drive using a defense specifically designed for the playoffs. A repeat will show that Minnesota used five down linemen. Carl Eller, Doug Sutherland, Alan Page, Jeff Seaman, and Bob Lertzema with six defensive backs. And Lertzema, number 75, came open to smother the Cardinals' first offensive threat. But the Cardinal drive did shift the advantage to St. Louis, as twice from midfield, punter Hal Roberts booted the ball dead inside the Minnesota five. And on this one, the Cards almost got a break. The ball took an odd bounce off Bill Brown's leg, but Brownie recovered and the Vikings hung on until on their first possession of the second quarter, St. Louis took advantage of its good field position. First, Hart hit Earl Thomas, and then Hart himself sustained the threat when he scrambled for a first down at the Viking 14. One play later, Hart found Earl Thomas wide open, and St. Louis took a 7-0 lead. A view from a slightly different angle shows that Hart was unhurried, and he had time to wait for Thomas to diagonal across the field and come clear, accounting for the first score of the game. The Vikings wasted little time in mourning as Fran Tarkinen sent Chuck Foreman hurrying to the Cardinal secondary for a 19-yard gain to get Minnesota going. But the play that kept the drive alive was this pure Tarkenden jump pass to Dave Osborne, bringing the ball to the St. Louis 33. From there, Minnesota played nickel and dime for three and four yards at a time until Francis sprinted out to his right and found John Gilliam soaring for the catch to complete a 16-yard scoring play, tying the game at seven. But with time dwindling, the half was not yet over as Hart moved his mates upfield. The cards moved 66 yards in 43 seconds, only to run out of time at the Minnesota Six. From there, Jim Bakken missed a 23-yard field goal attempt, leaving the score not at half 7-7. After the intermission, Jim Hart's hot hand turned cool, and this poorly thrown ball was picked off by Jeff Wright at the top of the third period. Although Wright returned the ball to the St. Louis 44, 
The Vikings had to settle for a 37-yard field goal from Fred Cox, and they had a 10-7 advantage. But on the Cardinals' next possession, Minnesota had better luck. As Terry Metcalf, trying to sweep right, lost control of the football, and Nate Wright, number 43, turned the air into a 17-7 lead for the Vikings. A closer look will show that Carl Eller broke down the timing of the play and loosened the ball in Metcalf's grasp. Alan Page dislodged it, and the Vikings had seven game-breaking points from a defense which has contributed so much to the Minnesota Vikings' success under head coach Bud Grant. On their next series, the Minnesota offense took its turn, and three times Tarkinen fired long against the Cardinals' fine cornerback Norm Thompson. And on the third try, he connected with John Gilliam. A missed extra point made the score Vikings 23, Cardinals 7 after seven and a half minutes of the third quarter. And as John Gilliam trotted upfield to receive congratulations from Fran Tarkington, the St. Louis Cardinals had to be rehearsing these bitter lessons for next year, reminding themselves that the playoffs are a 60-minute season, permitting not the slightest lapse in concentration. Sparked by their sudden surge, the Vikes did not allow Jim Hart and the Cardinals even a first down until the final play of the quarter. And then Jim Hart heaved long desperately. The ball fluttered in the leaden Minnesota sky and fell short, or it too would have been in vain. But Mel Gray came back and got it, reviving hopes for the Cards' dormant offense. But a second look reveals under what pressure Jim Hart launched his prayer. But even as he followed the football downfield, Jim Hart, essentially a rhythm passer, must have known that he was playing the Vikings game, that he was being forced to hurry his patterns and his release. And this is not the same successful rhythm which had brought the Cardinals and their big play attack so far, so fast. Pressure, too, was affecting all the veins and arteries of the Cardinals' offensive system. And what once had been sure and easy was now uncertain and difficult. Meanwhile, Fran Tarkinen had his short stroke offense in perfect tune. And the cooled off Cardinals big playmakers had to stand aside and watch as their private hopes and championship dreams all but dissolved. With 12 minutes gone in the last quarter, Chuck Foreman completed a 57 yard drive with this four yard burst. Trailing 30 to seven with nothing to win but the memory of having tried to the last, Jim Hart mounted his final thrust. Oddly, not until now did Hart turn to his great tight end, Jackie Smith. With only a minute remaining, Terry Metcalf broke into the end zone and the St. Louis Cardinals had their pride and the Minnesota Vikings had their victory, 30 to 14. A victory won for 60 full minutes of concentrated effort and attention to detail. A victory for experience over exuberance and a victory ensuring one last week of rock tough football both inside and outside the Mets.